<laughs> okay, so I've got everything set here. Chat room's up and running. And we're actually on time. We're actually on time. Shocking. I told you, Terry. A little be bit early. Almost 11.01. I said Terry would be easy because he's tech savvy. Yep, I am he's like Mr. Tech, and so we would have no issues with that. We're hoping. <laughs> yeah, we have some thoughts for you. <laughs> <laughs> Your prizes. Yes, indeed. I, <laughs> my pretty, we'll get Here's you. Here's something strange. Every time I sit down to do this show, my eyes water. Oh, you just get all teary up and excited. That's all. I it think is. it is. It's it's a strange phenomenon. I don't know if it's the lighting. If it's my, I work at the computer all day and it doesn't do this, but when I sit down to do a show, my eyes water. That's odd. Strange my, excitement. My, my eyes water when I watch Patton. Does that count? The movie? <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe it's like watching. a good movie, actually. It was. I loved that movie. <laughs> Is that crazy? Okay. All right. So I'm going to dim the screen right now. Uh, Terry. You'll probably hear the intro through Justin. I never know what actually gets played out through Justin. Some, some well, things he hasn't don't get muted, played out. so he won't. All right. Um, so anyway, here we go. We're going to start the show recording right now. And good day, wherever you are. Welcome to Shrek Tech. And there's Gina right next to me. Am I right here already? Hey, you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> you're not watching the preview. Exactly. <laughs> um, good morning. And I, I was saying this is going to be one of Rick's favorite shows because usually we have, for some reason, we do have a lot more female guests than we do male guests. I I'm okay with so females. Usually Rick doesn't get a word in edgewise. Um, <laughs> but not only do we have an awesome awesome male guest not that that makes a difference but just that it'll help balance out for rick um but terry is one of the most techie gadget guys that i know and i did wear a shirt in honor of terry gadgets make me giddy um i wore my gadget shirt just for um, terry being on the show and so i want to i want to welcome our guest terry brock and Terry actually is a professional speaker, talks about everything to do with technology. He um, has an amazing website, so it, and we'll mention it several times and show it several times, but terrybrock.com, that with tons of resources, probably one of the most generous people with his information that I know. Um, his blog is just one that you need to bookmark on there. And so, welcome, Terry. I'm so excited that you're finally getting to be with us on Shrek Tech. Hi, Terry. Hey, thank you very much, Gina. It is great to be with you, and I'll tell you, we are going to have some fun today. More fun than the law will allow. It'll be great. Of course, <laughs> the laws are that's different. That's not a lot of fun right now, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It, it, I think we will have way too much fun talking about um, everything going on in the world of tech. And first thing I want to just throw out and ask even, even you, Terry, to see, do you use, are you an Instagram user? I haven't got into Instagram as much. I uh, understand it's got some now, some challenges now with Twitter, thanks to our friends at Facebook who purchased it. But uh, I haven't used that. I'm uh, still learning how to use my uh, iPhone, and I understand it does take pictures. So I'm working on that part. <laughs> it is the whole virtual or the whole social sharing photo site. But it's interesting because I love Instagram. I use it a lot. I don't really care if it goes to Twitter or not. So. This whole new thing with the photos not showing up the right way when you go to your Twitter profile, not such a big deal to me because typically your Instagram audience is a little different than, um, than even your Twitter audience. But now I just heard that Twitter is rolling out its own photo filters. So to me, that was kind of exciting. Yeah, that'll be sure. interesting. We're seeing that each platform is now starting to take their own uh, area and do what they want. And it's like Facebook saying, okay, now we're not going to uh, have this voting anymore. And so, of course, you think, how many other corporations <laughs> vote on, you know, let the customers decide what to do? And so we have to realize, okay, whatever you put on Facebook, realize it's not yours. You're just visiting there. Right. And uh, pictures and things like that, always keep it back up at home on your external drive. Yeah, you never know. I mean, that's what we say, you know, look at what happened with MySpace and, you know, 
But think about how many photos we load onto Facebook. I mean, I'm one of those people. I load photos, although I do tend to load them multiple places. Instagram, Facebook, sometimes Flickr. Um, but do you so have, do you have one the, repository where you keep everything? It, it, yeah, that's how I do it. Now, I'm curious how Twitter is going to even use photo filters because I don't ever take a picture while I'm in Twitter. I take a picture and then I share it to Twitter. So I'm not sure where this whole filter um, it comes in. There is a camera. When you go to the, the status bar on Twitter, there is a little camera button. So it must just be if you take a picture. It just uploads it. Or, I mean, upload it, that it, but it, that it must um, allow you to do the filtering at that time. I, I have to play around with that. But that was, that was kind of big news. Even, and some people are really upset about the whole Twitter, Instagram. Well, Twitter already ruined TweetDeck. So... I mean, they've sure. got plenty of stuff they can still ruin. <laughs> and this is why God invented Hootsuite. That's right. So we can do it right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this works. But I thought that was kind of big news. I don't know if anyone in the chat room has ever done any photos loading directly from Twitter. I've, I, I've done it a couple of times, and it just loads it. That's it. There's no filter, nothing else. Right. So you just, that's what I mean. You just, so I'm wondering where their filtering is going to come in. So it'll be fun to see kind of that whole, whole side of the business. But, um, you know, all these social sites, there's all kinds of hubbub going on about Facebook and all the promoted posts and kind of weird stuff going on there with um, folks. And this is just something I'm going to throw out to you because this is a weird concept. Check the pages on your pro, uh, Facebook profile that you have liked. Like, sh look and see what pages you have liked. What I'm finding is there's pages showing up there that I haven't liked. I didn't ever go to their product. Yes, or but they know you should have liked it. That must be <laughs> somehow it is forcing. I, I don't know what the. Uh, maybe I'm on another page somewhere. Yeah, I've seen the same thing. I, go, I like that I person. Click on an, <clears throat> I, I, I must click on something that's then automatically making me like the page because I'm seeing likes. Well, I got, and I, they're doing some sort of weird ads. I, I noticed I, I was in yesterday for a couple of minutes and it had a thing on top saying, help Justin or somebody like that get get more friends. And I was going, who's Justin and why do I care? Um, it was just there. And, I, and it was a very faint little X <coughs> so you could close that box out. It took me a while to figure out that was, that was a close I. Um, I had no idea what, what that was all about. I guess it was an ad of sorts. Yeah. Well, somehow there are pages being liked for us hmm. in weird and strange ways. So if you go to Facebook and look at all the pages that you have liked, you may find some that you really didn't, and then you have to actually go to the page and unlike them. Maybe they're following the way we do our elections. You just kind of vote for people you don't actually really like, but <laughs> you're well, going we won't to... go there. Uh, I think you're right, Rick. <laughs> we won't go there. Well... And I, I love um, chatting with Terry because he's always got kind of the latest um, and greatest in gadgets. And so I'm always um, amazed at all the stuff that, that you have and that you are always involved with. But yesterday, Terry, when you and I were chatting, it was um, I love the concept. You brought up something about, you know, we buy all these gadgets, and this is holiday season when we look at getting more gadgets. Um, but you talked about how to actually make money. How do you generate revenue from these gadgets? Okay, you piqued my curiosity. What? Tell us about that. I think the real key is, is that's how we got to start with everything. It's really business. You know, you look at when we're in business, we want to connect with others. And I feel that really the technology is just there so that you can facilitate relationships, so you can help people and be able to serve them. And it's a interesting thing. The more you help others and satisfy their needs, the more you get. It's like uh, uh, the late great Zig Ziglar said, you know, if you can get anything in life you want, if you help enough other people get what they want. And uh, I think that's the key. And so with all these things, look at ways to connect. And one of the things I do a lot now is I'm using a tool um, it's a, not a gadget per se, but it runs on gadgets called iJot. E-Y-E-J-O-T and I know that Gina, you use that as well. It's yeah. great for connecting with people and it gives you the ability to send a video Video email to someone. I do it on my laptop. I do it on my iPhone. I do it on my iPad. It works very nicely. And so you can then sit down and send somebody a message and they actually see you. It's personal. It's warm. And that means it translates into business because people like to do business with people 
that they like and they want to make sure that they know you and when you can use something like that to connect and use a oh say a little device like your iPad real quickly and easily you can then put it in there send a video from anywhere and using I'm using now the new LTE which I love on my iPad 3 here it gives me the ability to send it out almost at Wi-Fi speeds from many, many places, almost anywhere. They're expanding the network more. And so that's really a way that you can use any gadget to make money. Thinking See, I of ways love that you iJob can because you're people. right. Oh. Go ahead, Gina. There? Okay, I was like, I still, I think you're going, but I'm, I wasn't sure. I, what I loved about iJot um, when I first saw it, and yesterday was, again, reminder, when you sent me that ma message through iJot, it's not that customers or someone has to download anything. It just plays, which yes. is really nice. That's the beauty of it. In the past, we could send videos. And so if I were to send you a, a video, I send Rick a video, it would be great. But then you'd have to download it. And often the uh, external uh, files could not get through a lot of corporate firewalls. Mm -hmm. And if they were too big, you couldn't send it. Now with iJot, it stores everything in the cloud which is just absolutely wonderful. That's you take and the cloud and mobility, firewalls? put those together, you got, I think, heaven. And, and no blocks by firewalls? Exactly. That's good. It's not going to be blocked by those firewalls, so you can send it out. And really what that means is it's not just seeing your face, but it's like if I want to show them something, I can say, well, you know, look, we've got a new gadget here. Look at this. It does this, and if I push this button right here, look what happens. That comes out over there. See, I can explain what's going That's on much better with video than I ever could with just text on a screen. That, now, Terry, how, how do you use that with your clients? I will send them uh, information regularly to say, hi, Bill, how you doing? Make sure it's okay. And I'll even show them things. Like uh, yesterday, I've got a big presentation coming up uh, in a few weeks in uh, Las Vegas, and I'm talking to the client, and I'm showing them information, and I'm holding up objects. I'm saying, this is what I'm thinking I'm going to present. What do you think of this? And look how this one works, etc. Much more than they could ever do over the phone, or much more than we could ever do otherwise, they're getting a chance to see me so that then when we meet, they know what I look like. I know what they look like. We're seeing each other on video. And uh, I'm using it for other things, like, for instance, doing a video with the chairman of the conference before the event, telling people why they ought to come to the conference and what we're going to cover, the benefits to them. They're seeing it, and then we put that on their websites. And it, it creates much more of a relationship and a connection than we've ever had before. So I think really technology ultimately is about people and connecting with people and helping people to achieve their goals. Is it 60 second video on iJot or 30? Oh, you can actually do up to five minutes for free. Then they have two uh, uh, tiers. They have the, there's a freemium and then a premium version, and they have two levels of premium. One is for uh, 10 minutes, and another is for 15 minutes. And they add not only the 15 minutes, but also a lot of branding and a lot of other abilities to track uh, what's going on. And so for uh, for free, you can get a five minute version, and that's very nice. That's yeah, and that's a long video. Yes, it is. In the age of the internet, five minutes is uh, rather long. That's long. Well, that's also, yeah, that's you also make sure about three minutes good. more than it's the average that. attention span. Yeah, it is longer than the attention span. <laughs> um, so that's that's a great tool. Love that one. Um, and I could see that being used, again, to you're sending an email to someone with information, even a proposal, to send send your message with that iJot first so that um, they get to hear your voice and kind of have that personal touch. Oh, yeah. It's, they see you. They relate you. And you think about it. That's a natural way of speaking. Roll it back uh, 500 years ago. The way we connected and communicated was largely with just seeing each other. And we could visually see them. We could hear them. That, that's a very natural form of communication. Now we're, we're kind of circled back to that so that we can communicate. But with the technology, we leverage it so we can do it literally around the world, as you and I are, so that we now have connections with people in other continents. And uh, it's like the world is such become very very small and we're talking with people around the world and right there in their home because of tools like YouTube and uh, tools like Skype that we're using right now Google Hangouts and uh, many many others that we can use to get close to people and I think there's opening up a world of opportunities for people that could say hey I could do this I could do that I was just reading a service that 
medical doctors are now offering, that they're offering a concierge service where they're able to work with people and they're able to help them so that you can have a doctor. You pay X dollars a month to be in the club, and that gives you a right to call the doctor. And if you call, you can be, might be charged a small amount for each visit, but the doctor can then talk to you. The doctor can see you, can do visual exams as much as they can over Skype and others. And if the doctor says, hmm, looks like we need to see each other, or you need to go to such and such clinic, they can then authorize that, or they could renew the uh, prescription. There's a lot that they could do without you having to physically go into the office. That f is better for the doctors. They're getting extra revenue. They're getting uh, able to see more patients. It's better for the patients. You get much faster service that way. So by leveraging the technology, everybody wins. And it definitely beats sitting in a waiting room for about four hours. That's true. Unless you got really good videos on your iPad, that's then true. that's a different thing. <laughs> you just want to escape from your office or something, you know? Then you might want to. And uh, the discussion in the chat room was first. Uh, Larry had asked, "Does iJot have an app?" So are you using it? And then uh, Leva answered that and said, "It does say it's on iPhone, which means it would be iPad as well soon on Android." Do you actually use it via the app on your iPad? Yeah, I use it on the app on my iPad and the iPhone. I use the iPhone app and then use that one on my iPad. And it works well. As a matter of fact, one thing that I'm using now, just I got last week, but the new gadget, it's really a new one for me, but it's an old one that's been out for a while. It's the uh, uh, Mikey Digital from Blue Microphones. The Mikey is a really good mic. Yeah, it's great. And then with this adapter. Wait a minute, that, that's cool. You put that in there, and then I take this into my iPhone 5, like so. And now what that means, Rick, you'll appreciate this in the audio, that means you get way cool sound. Yep, yeah, I have it. Oh, yeah, nice. And then also, it. It, you know, it, it plugs in right here on the side. You can put in your external microphone so you could clip a mic on, right. and you get very good uh, resonance that way. So now yeah. I can do these uh, videos very rapidly, send them out to people. And again, it goes back to we're doing it so we can connect with people a whole lot more. Yeah, and it's, it's about 90 bucks. I think it's about 90 bucks yeah, for the mic, right. and it does a really good job. Blue is actually about 10 miles from us where we are. Oh, really? They're great people They're there. They're good people, yep. Is it M I K? M I C K E Y. Like Mickey, but they call Mike, it Mikey. Mikey. Yeah, Mikey Digital. Okay. It's a right, Mikey Digital. Gina, you're that. not watching my reviews. I did one on it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's too much to watch. <laughs> well, well, you just got to give up that, that. silly that. sleep, Gina, and you'll be okay. I know. Well, I do have. I tell you, I since bought, you're a, uh, oops, sorry. I bought the iMic that is a you know regular microphone that plugs into my iPad, and it has a six foot cord I believe right. that I've actually used uh, many times when I'm doing interviews and we're videotaping and that works really great too just the iMic it was I think again $99 mm -hmm. but I like this one that just pops well, in well the Mikey's a really good voice over mic it's actually yes. really clean so really yeah, that would be if you were doing something yourself because if you're interviewing someone it's still probably too far away with where uh, you it's need not, to it's not built for interviews though it has a stereo mode where you could actually interview people um so it, it can do it. I think I think when you're doing a real interview, you probably want a, a more of a handheld mic. Yeah. Right. Actually, you could do both. I actually went to a, folk, a place, uh, Microphone Madness, mm -hmm. at microphonemadness.com, and uh, they designed a mic for me so I could have one over the ear and then a splitter with a handheld. Oh, perfect. So then I plug both of them as one into my recording device, my camcorder or audio, and then I'm able to hold the microphone and have the digital uh, over-the-ear mic so I can talk and ask questions and then move the microphone back and forth to say, well, Rick, what do you think about that? And when you talk, then I can pull it back as well if you get some when the, or, or you need to interview two or three people. Works very now, nicely. Now, there is a way to do that real easily. If you have a, a Zoom recorder like an H2N, yes, um, I believe that one has um, adapters for external mics. And then you get something, something like, like one of the earphone mics that has, like a, yeah, exactly, like an XLR attachment, put it in there, and now you've got the same, same, same basic thing. Yep. It's nice. And so there are lots of ways to do it. And again, it comes back to you're connecting with people mm -hmm. and being able to uh, bring a lot, of, a lot of folks together that way. One of the things I see right now is it's really exciting is doing interviews where you can have like you're doing. There's three of us here. We're in San Diego, Denver, Orlando, but it's as if we were in the same room. And now with the technology, with Skype, with Google Hangouts, et cetera, we can do all of that for very low or no cost. Yeah, that is that makes it great. And again, using it in a, a way to generate income um, or building your business or sharing. I mean, it's just great to, to do these type of interviews, save them, 
build an archive of them. Um, are you using the? Are you doing video? I know. I know the answer to this, but share with us how you actually use kind of these video uh, videotaped interviews in your business model. What I'm doing is I'm doing, so it goes over to terrybrock.com and clicks on the blog there, a shameless plug. There you can see a lot of video interviews that I'll do with people around the world. And so what I'll do there is uh, provide lots of content. There's no magic to the formula. It's you give lots of content, valuable information that's genuine and real. And then also you have ways for people to become involved with you. There's products that you have. And that once they've earned your trust, they know you, they like you, and they trust you, then they're able to, able to go to that next step which is engagement so they will engage with you because hey we all want to learn we want to get better and when we've followed someone say on a podcast I think for instance uh, Susan Bratton had a podcast a while back that I really like called Dishy Mix and I would listen to it many many times but when she had a product I was delighted to buy a product from her and pays money because she gives good content I know what she has she's got great uh, information there and I think that's the way you can make money you give a lot away for free that's really good and then you have commercially available ways for them to get involved with you and then that model has been around uh, since the early days of radio and television yeah and i agree so it I, works that's, very well absolutely it works really well actually have you ever read that book the go-giver oh i know bob uh, um, bob berg and john david mann the authors that bob berg is in our mastermind group great he, it's a so great, i get a chance a to book. see him regularly and he lives that philosophy by the way not just uh, on stage not just in the book but i mean just one on one even when things get tough bob is a consummate professional that's great as a matter of fact i saw bob tweet out this morning about you being on the show oh he did well very good shout um, out to you bob um <laughs> Thank you, <Yeah>. Bob. <laughs> so, so you definitely use a lot of video in your in your business. You use a lot of podcasting. Um, are there other tools that you find kind of easy to use, and you travel a lot, so easy to take with you that um, kind of managing relationships? I think there's a lot of tools that are out there. One of the things I do is I use uh, some of the Fujitsu scanners. They've I've got one that I. Use. use here at the office that's sitting right there that I can scan a lot of things. So as I'm on a phone call, for instance, I still like that old thing called, here, watch this. Gina, have you heard of one of these? They're called a three by five index card. Look at that. And they're in a thing called, uh, what was it? Paper. Paper is what they call it. I remember in first grade I used that. Yeah, yeah. These are still really good. And a pen. And so while I'm on a phone call with someone, I find it very easy just to write some notes down or my math it out or something like that. It works very nicely. Then when I'm finished with it, I can take this, scan it very quickly, and then I've got a record of the call that I had with uh, Sue Johnson on uh, this day, etc., where we talked about this, Do, use those as keynotes, and then send that up to Evernote. Evernote gives you the ability to store that, and just a marvelous little tool, you're storing it in the cloud, so that then three months later you think, oh, I had a call with Sue Johnson, but I forget what she said about such and such. You can go back and find it very easily. So a scanner becomes a great tool for creating and leveraging relationships even more. Okay, I'm kind of surprised that you're using a scanner. Why wouldn't you, or why do you like the scanner over, say, taking a picture of it with your iPhone? Oh, I find that the iPhone is good, but sometimes taking the picture doesn't always work out as well as a scanner, particularly if I've got a, a full page or I've got some uh, small little pages and things like that. I find that uh, the scanner can work out very well for paper and uh, doing it that way. Pictures are still very good. I just uh, tend to like the scanner so I get a little bit better clarity, and it seems to be a little bit faster for me. That's true. I guess that would make it bigger. I know, um, again, I'm always taking pictures of scribbled notes, and I'll snap a picture and put it in Evernote, which, again, I love um, Evernote for that reason. It's just your catch-all, keep-all, find-all tool. Yeah. It's very, very nice. And then, and also, I like the scanning that I've got it, a copy now on my computer as well as in Evernote. We yes. know the importance of don't put all your eggs in one storage bin. So make sure that you, have not, uh, you don't have everything only in Evernote or only on Facebook. Make sure that they might be in a couple of different places. Matter of fact, one of the things we're doing here at the office today is we've got a lot of videos up on YouTube, and most of them we have copy, but we want to make sure we've got our own copy as well as an MP4. YouTube gives you that ability to download up to two an hour of your own videos and so we get those have them as mp4s just in case we need them for some other reason we've got them there got it got stuff everywhere all little eggs tucked everywhere 
Exactly. Something like that is good so that you uh, have a diversifying and that's been good for living life and investing anyway. So those kind of tools are very good. And uh, oh, by the way, another thing I got to mention when you take the pictures. Here's a great little tool that you can get. One of these, I'm glad we got video. This is so nice, Gina, that we can do video. It's a little tool that uh, goes in and out, and I can use this for my iPhone so that I showed you my Mikey uh, mic on here. What I can do is I can use this and be able to uh, store it or position it here so that now with this around it, I can use one of those extenders like uh, one of these, this is the zip shot, it gives you the idea. put it on here, and now it's got a way to hold that iPhone, or it can go on a regular tripod. So one of these little tools will cost you a couple of nickels, uh, is really, really nice to have as well. Okay, I need that, because I'm always looking at, I wish there was a way to put my phone on a tripod, so that you can either take a picture of somebody, or just stay the camera on a monopod, or a, a tripod. Where now that go, would work for go to, go to uh, Amazon, you'll probably find one for that one. Yep, Amazon.com is usually the place we go. You know, um, I like Terry, we have the same toys. I know, I know, exactly. I knew you guys, it, I, we would be inseparable by the end. I, what I have that, that same well, thing, it's great. Oh. So there you go, Gina. This is what you need. You get one of these. And the, and the nice thing about it, they're very inexpensive. For, oh, maybe uh, uh, an Andrew Jackson, you know, $20, you can get yourself uh, most all the stuff here that you need. And then you've got it set. And now what, we're, what you're really doing is you're recording, and you've got good quality audio, good quality video that you can then send to someone. And it's right there on your iPhone in a convenient way. Okay, tell us the name of that little clamp thing. Uh, I don't know. Just, I think it's called. Do I just clamp. type clamp thing? <laughs> yeah, clamp thing. You know, <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, like a Jed Clamp at home and listen to my story <laughs> to a man named Jed or you know, something like that. You know, <laughs> so this is a little uh, whole. I would put on there a uh, iPhone holder or iPhone holder for tripod. I just bought a few of them, so I always like to get when I find something that's really good on Amazon. I usually buy one, and then if it's really good, I go back and buy one or two more because uh, you don't want to have just one of those things that right. are really essential and important. Yeah, I forgot what it's called too. I have it too, and it's it's like I it's not I clamp. It's it's something. Uh, what was it called? I forget. It. You know, they don't even have. It's about twenty bucks, twenty five bucks, it's something not just like that. IPhone. That would hold any phone because of the way it's. No, no, that one fits the iPhone only right now, but there are other ones that can fit other phones, and you also have the GPS device holders that sometimes have tripod uh, attachments, so you could that's use one of those, and they'll they'll attach to even your size phone. Tell me, Terry, why that's only iPhone. The way it looks like it clamps down on the phone. I don't know. I've got, actually, I thought just for today, just because I want to really geek out today, I'm showing you I have my iPhone 5. I also have an iPhone 4, and I have my original iPhone, all of which I am using. So they are still being used, I, but that the little device will work on all three of these on the iPhone. I don't know about, say, a, say a Samsung uh, S3, That's but a little it seems like, I don't know, it might, depends on how much space is here. And I haven't tested it on a, a S3, but that would be a quick trip over to the Amazon showroom, also known as Best, Best Buy. <laughs> the showroom. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, and, sure. and Larry's concern, he said in the chat room, his issue would be if, if his phone was in an otter box. Um, yeah, it might make it. I don't know. That looks like well, the way okay, it expands. Okay, okay. It there, is, there is a solution to that. Larry, take the phone take out the of the water box. box. No, yes. my daughter, who has destroyed more phones than anyone, not the Shreklet, but the older broke college student, took her water box off for 20 minutes. Not sure why, because she's actually destroyed a couple already. <laughs> took it off for 20 minutes. It fell. It didn't crack the screen, but it had the blue screen with lines. Uh. So she paid $100 to get it fixed at the... Um, I don't know, Mac Shack or something in Fort Collins, but now that phone is probably, you know, a $900 phone. It's been repaired so many times. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, don't, don't it can be it. like that. Unfortunately, they do break, but getting some of those outer boxes, outer boxes are really, really nice. Yeah, I know. As I say that, I have no protection whatsoever on my phones. I've got my, my Galaxy 3 in an outer box. It's, it's, I yeah. really enjoy it. It's good. Yeah. And, and I still you like have my Galaxy S3? Hmm? You like your Galaxy S3? You know, it's funny. I've, been, I've had four iPhones, and I didn't like the 5. The 5, I thought, was too teeny. My hands are big. I just I didn't like it. I thought the screen was crappy. Um, I was not pleased with, the, with how small the videos looked on it. Um, it, it. It reminded me of the original, when the TVs first came out, everything had the marquees around it because they didn't quite have the right aspect ratio. Mm. I sometimes wonder what Apple's thinking, doing, or 
or perpetrating, but the 5 <laughs> didn't do it for me. And I like the Galaxy 3. It's faster. Uh, the screen is just as sharp. I think they're, they're both retina displays. Any, you know, there's yep. that whole mystique of what's a retina display. And in essence, a retina display is any screen that has 300 DPI or more. Which is very nice. Yeah, which yeah. is great. They look really yeah. good. But that's the maximum our eyes can see. Which is so you don't have to do anything beyond a retina display. The eyes won't can't tell. Yeah. It's kinda like only dogs would appreciate some of the audio that's out there. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so there might be some creature that does, but I know what you mean, but I love the video on here. I mean it's just that you know, that's why I would say those that are watching, uh, there's no one size fits all. Right. Find what works right for you. I love the fact that I could like for instance I was reading uh, last night reading Guy Kawasaki's book on what the plus hmm. about Google Plus and right. reading that and I enjoyed it and then he had a lot of QR codes and I thought this is just amazing. I can take this, scan the QR code, immediately I'm watching a video on on it and of course that's older technology now nothing new but to me it's just fabulous that we can take a printed document called a book scan this device and now I'm enriching my learning experience and understanding it even more than I would just with print yeah that's true I know the whole the whole piece of you know making that integrated that whole experience better using these tech tools is, is awesome um, okay before we run out of time I have we have to shift to social because you and I was gonna say you're better, your better half, but you're your, <laughs> your shining sidekick, um, who we're hoping to get on the show soon, Gina Carr. Um, you guys do a lot with uh, companies, helping them with social and and using different tools. What are some of the tools that you're finding that really help you do your job better, or or really save time when it comes to managing all the chaos? I think there's a lot of them out there. Of course, using social media, that's where we need to be today. It's like the, we know the world has shifted. We know that that's where it is. And it's most important that we realize we treat it right, that it's not just a broadcast, but it's interaction. And it's a combination. I still go back to one of my old buddies, uh, Hootsuite. And Hootsuite just is there for programming, sending information out. I like that. Buffer app is also very good so that you can create buffers and it goes out at a, a certain period of time. Facebook has put in certain rules and regulations where they don't like that as much and they don't put as high an edge rank on that uh, real technical stuff but I find that what social media really is all about is interacting and that means I think uh, as we talk to clients I just finished doing a program for a very large uh, fortune 10 company and talking with them about social media how they would use it I say it's most important not just to treat it as another way of broadcasting don't think of it like 1960s television where you buy a bunch of TV and a bunch of radio and newspapers and you just blast it out to the world. That doesn't work. Today it's been turned upside down. Find ways that you can connect and that means make a commitment to be there and to respond to people. You don't have to respond with a 30 page uh, document, but you respond with a quick yes, I hear you, or yes, we'll get on that, or I'll have people take a look at that when a customer or a prospect uh, signifies they've got a real issue. So I think that social media has become really important on those areas. And the tools are great. My iPhone is one of the great tools I use with social media for taking pictures, sending it out, and uh, using it that way. And they're getting more all the time. I love it. Yeah. It's interesting because Leva said in the chat room, definitely commitment is, you know, for a company to take on any social media, it, it is a commitment. And I think most yeah. of the time, one of the mistakes people make is they don't anticipate the amount of time and commitment that it takes. They think, oh, throw something up on Facebook, throw something out on Twitter once a day. Um, the commitment, and I just read a post this morning about um, the top companies. They did this kind of mystery shopping for people, sent all kinds of tweets. It was just focusing on Twitter and customer response or customer service response. So they sent it to large brands that have a Twitter account and how poorly, I was shocked, how you know the the statistics were less than fifty percent even got back to the person who asked mm. a question, um, and then the response time when they did get back was so long that it was just kind of surprising to me. When you have a large firm, how are you not monitoring that twenty four seven? Yeah, to get back to people to make sure you're answering their questions or or whatever. And I think again, as an individual managing your own social media, you can be just as guilty if you're yep. not really monitoring the the conversations that people are trying to have with you. 
You're absolutely right, and Gina. I think often people look for the magic box. They're looking for a solution that now I can buy this gizmo, and now I can sit back, lace my fingers behind my head, put my feet up on the desk, and I don't have to do any work. I'll let this thing do it for me. I think that's what we want to do with whatever the technology is. But really, it comes back to if you were in the 1940s, you would have to be there and listen to people, use the telephone, talk to people, and you would want to be there, walk out and see them, shake their hand, etc. And those things still matter today. Even though we're using social media, you still want to be there. When someone sends you a note, respond back that, hi, it was really good to hear from you, Mary. Uh, we'll look forward to talking with you later. Or sometimes a quick phone call. Mary, we need to talk about this. Call me at such and such number. And I think that means you've got to have the attitude of helping others sincerely. And then that ultimately generates not only business, but I think a much better life and a much better world when we can really concentrate on the relationships and use the technology just to fuel those relationships and make it easier. Yeah, I agree. And it, and it is. It's a commitment of time. You have to be willing to say, if I'm using this for my business, again, if you're using it for personal, do what you want. Um, but if you want to build relationships, whether it's your business or personal, you've got to commit to being there. Or as I just saw Donna put um, in the chat room, you know, being on. You don't yep. just throw content out right, there. Donna. And, and then here's nothing that surprises me. When I start working with clients, I look at how many of them, they go out and they'll follow strategic people that they're trying to connect with or they want to become their customers. So they go out and follow people. They very rarely will go to see who has followed them to follow those people back. So companies, mm -hmm. I guess, have this arrogant feel of yeah. we'll follow people back that we want to follow. We, we don't necessarily need to follow the commoners who want to follow us. And I, I don't know, I just find that really bad practice for a company. Yes. You know, yeah, you I agree. You have to be there and you have to really care. And there's a lot of arrogance, like you said. You uh, came out and said the word, and that's a very important. That people sit back and think, well, I will send out things, but I don't have time for that. Right. And, you know, it's like they want everyone to read their mail that they're sending out on email, but they don't have time to read anyone else's mail. Right. Coming. The stuff coming to me is junk mail. And I think we can't do that. We've got to care for people, much like if you joined a very prestigious country club. You would not dare to send someone else in your place and say, this person's going to go there and pass out my business cards and always try to get business for me. No, you've got to be there. You've got to commit to the time, like you said, Gina. You commit to the time to be there uh, every Thursday for the annual meeting uh, or for the weekly meetings that are there on Thursday for luncheons or whatever it is. Then you become part of that community, and it takes the time of you physically being there. I find those CEOs who do best are those who are now involving themselves in some way in a community in the right way that works for them. Yeah, it's interesting. Leva, that, that's such an interesting point. Leva was saying it's often considered as wasting time, which is exactly what I think cust, uh, companies, and I, don't, I mean, I keep saying larger companies, but I, I guess it's any company. And I, a client that I'm currently working with actually said to me, doesn't it look bad, though, if you're out there following a bunch of, because I said, we need to follow back all these people who have followed you from the beginning of time. People have followed you, wanting you to engage with them as well and listen to what's going on in their world so that you can respond with how, do, how can you fit into their world. And they said, well, doesn't that um, give a, an impression, a negative impression if I'm following all these people back that um, as a company, is that not seen as bad? So I'm not sure where that started or where that came from, but it's a really, I think, a bad practice. It's kind of like saying, we, we'll open our doors and let you guys come in. We're not going to listen to you if you come in, but um, yeah. just come in. I think you put it very well, and it's a matter of being able to help them. And then at the same time, there's the balance. It's not either or. It's like if you spend all your day just connecting with people, feeling good and sharing, and, oh, here's a picture of my dog. Oh, here's a cute picture of this. I like this. And that's all you do. You're going to go bankrupt. There will not be money in there. And so there's business side. And so it's a balance of concentrating on we do need to pay the bills. This is business. Therefore, you win them over. People see you. They like you, much like going to a country club. You join that prestigious country club. You don't walk in going, hi, I'm wonderful. Buy my stuff. You'd be thrown out in a moment. But you get right. to know them, you meet their needs, you listen, and you provide ways to help them. And then they want to reciprocate. They want to help you. And particularly if you're very good, if you have the competency and you're really good at what you do, then they'll want to not only use you but refer others to you. So it's a, a balance of doing both, provide the business 
and be out there and definitely respond to those people for some a bunch of people following you you need to follow them because even though you might consider someone arrogantly oh they're just a commoner we're not going to pay attention to them they know somebody who knows somebody and word spreads really really fast in uh, the blog world and the Twitter world and the Facebook world yeah that's true and with that though Gina we are out of time Mary I totally agree with you Mary in the chat room said many companies don't see a direct effect on the bottom line so it's not seen as a revenue producer bad practice bad practice yep. agreed. agreed Mary you're right Wait, it, like there's never enough time to cover everything with you Terry there's so much so at least we know to get more info go to terrybrock.com we put it in the chat room one more time and uh, definitely check out his blog which is just tons of resources um, tons of information there so thank you so much Terry this has just been too fun it's always great to see you. Rick, great to meet you and Same work here. with you on this. Look forward to staying in touch. And Gina, big hugs across the miles from Orlando, way up there to Denver. And Rick, a big hug to you out to San Diego. Same here. I'm in, I'm in Camarillo, actually. Camarillo, Okay, Camarillo. okay. well, we'll send the t hug the other way then, okay? <laughs> we can do that digitally. It works that way. And thank you to everyone in the chat room. You guys are brilliant as usual. And, um, yeah, thank you. We'll, we'll get the link out. It'll be up on YouTube within 30 minutes. And uh, for the replay, and I'll get the chat room. A lot of resources were written down in the chat room, so we'll copy all of this and put it um, out there as well. So, All right. Well, thanks, everyone. And if you're in the chat room, we appreciate it as always. And if you're watching the show, please subscribe. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. Thank thanks, you. Terry. Bye, Gina. Thank you. Happy shopping. we got to find one of those gadgets. Yeah. Flippy gadgety. Okay, we're still live, but the show recording's over. Awesome. <clears throat> that was good. Hey, Terry, do you know a guy in your neck of the woods, uh, Mike, um, uh, Mark Jensen? Mark Jensen. That name sounds familiar. He has um, uh, newmediagear.com. He does podcasting on, on tech, gear. mostly microphones and uh, preamplifiers. He's, he's an audio guy, really good mm -hmm. guy. He's a, He's over there. He's a good friend of mine. Where is he based? He's out of Orlando. Orlando, okay. Yeah, it's newmediagear.com. I will have to look that up. Mark he's a, he's a good guy. Sounds Tons of good information with him. As far as audio and stuff, he's, he's it. Mm -hmm. Larry, Larry just pointed out, we went through the whole episode without mentioning the P word. That's right. Nobody said Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had a chance with a guy on today, but... <laughs> Next week, I'm going to have to double up. I will have to Pinterest. double up. I've heard of that somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. I, Larry just said, Gina, do you have a cold? No, it's an allergy to the show. Hmm. I sit down to do the show. My eyes water. My nose runs. What is it? There, maybe it's something... It can't be something in my office. I, when I'm working in here, I don't have this. But when I turn on the show, I start tearing and... Game running nose. Bring, bring your tear to our eye. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> that is so strange. Um, okay, I'm I'm looking right now on Amazon um, for an uh, let's see, I'll say smartphone iPod. Oh, I'm just looking at one of these others. See, here's another one that I got. Uh, that little clamp. And it says Case Star. That's in this little bag that came with it. Mm -hmm. So I might do a uh, so I just Google found on. It. I stabilizer mount. I stabilizer. That's it. I stabilizer. Okay. Fifteen dollars. Oh, it's gone down. It does look like it would fit. It does say it says mount your smartphone or mobile device to any standard tripod. Yeah, it actually works really well. I am placing my order right now. Cha ching. Good for you, and you got to take a picture with it and send it to me. I will. I stabilizer. Mount smartphone. Yeah, if you go on YouTube, the guy does videos on how to use it, how to take videos with it. He's the one who created it. I was like, how hard? I mean, to me, it's like, okay, that looks really simple. It, it is easy. It I is. have, I, I've always thought that. I go, gosh, I've got this tripod, I've got a monopod, I've got these little baby tripods, but I can't mount my phone. Brilliant. And now you can. Now you have moved to another plateau of living. <laughs> Hallelujah. Once again, gadgets make me giddy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs>
I love the sound effects. Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> we, we didn't even get them all out. Oh, my God. What was wrong with us? We were too involved here. Uh, yeah, I just put this in my shopping cart right now. At cart. It'll be here in two days. There you go. You got Amazon Prime? Yeah. Is it Amazon Prime? It's one the of only way to go. Wonderful things. Oh, I love it. I, I'm really excited because I just ordered a chandelier for my office, a black chandelier for my office. Black chandelier. From Amazon. I'm like, oh, I can't wait. My office is going to transform. It's going to be. Maybe that'll help your eyes not water. Maybe. I'm wondering if it's if it's the lighting. It must be because I never have all these lights on me when I'm working. So it must have some. That's the only thing that's different during the show. Mm. Mm. Could be. Or it's still early in the morning for you. You're wearing contacts or glasses? You see, you can't even see, can you? I can you? barely tell you. I have your glasses on. Glasses on. Well, actually, let's see. You're, you're small right now, but let me let me zoom in on you. Oh, yeah, I can see him now. My black eye is almost gone. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. She gets lots of black eyes on the show. We're not quite <laughs> sure what's going on. Black oh, eyes. You know. Oh, I tell well, you. I thought that was from fighting bears out in the mountains of Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Gina, Gina's kind of like I love Lucy. She gets into these little things like lifts tables up and the glass falls from the table into her eye. Yeah. <laughs> and how'd you get the second one? Skiing. Skiing. She took a yeah. face plant and the goggle. Total face plant. And her goggle just basically got her right in the eye again. Same no, place. No, I don't even know it was my goggles because the, it was the whole side of my face. My jaw was all swollen. My eye was swollen. They thought I cracked the... Whatever this little... Your husband doesn't want to go out with you anymore, right? He's, he's, he just, he's he always says, he goes, yeah. you've got to stop getting black eyes. People look at me like I'm a wife beater. So, <laughs> yeah. I go, well... So, whenever we're out somewhere, if I want to tease him, I, I'll tell him, I say, you better be nice or I'm going to flinch. That's evil. <laughs> oh, brother. Well, today's our big day. With We have a huge potential... A big meeting with a potential client with from the high, uh, corporate office, and it's like, oh, got to go get ready for that. It's in two hours, hour and a half. Yep. Well, so, go for it. Yep. I know. All right, we're going to shut down the live thing right now. Hey, for all you guys in the chat room, thanks again for being there. We'll see you guys. Actually, we're going to see you guys in about an hour. We're doing immediate chat in about an uh, hour and 20 minutes today. We Different day for, the, for a change. Excellent. And by the way, before I let you go, Rick, what's the best way to get in touch with you? I want to drop you an email or something. What's the best uh, way? Easiest way is uh, for email, it's Zanotti, Z-A-N-O-T-T-I, Rick, uh -huh. at gmail.com. And it's all one word, Zanotti, Rick, at gmail.com. For some odd reason, somebody had Rick Zanotti. This beyond beyond me. But so Zanotti, Rick, at, at gmail.com. Gmail and I did just uh, follow you on Twitter, and I got your validation service. I got to click on that. Good. Excellent. Yeah, I'd love to stay in touch and find out uh, ways we might be able to work together and uh, help each other. That sounds great. And, uh, yeah, if nothing else, we can talk about our, our current system. That'd be fun. Well, yeah, that would be. <laughs> you guys Very important these gadgety though. shows that would be, you guys would just be in heaven. It would just be bliss. Well, actually, I, I, was, I want to invite you on immediate chat, maybe in January if you have some time. That's a show all about digital media, digital anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Gina and I are going to be, uh, not Gina Shrek, my, my Gina Carr, we're going to be out in uh, New Media Expo uh, for a uh, while in Vegas. Are you going to that by chance? Mm, what is that one? That's uh, the, I'm looking at the calendar here, the 6th, 7th, and 8th of January. No, then that we're going one to stay over because I've got a program I'm doing the next week, so we're just going to stick around for the whole thing. And then CES is around there, too. Right, right. I think CES is a couple weeks after that. Uh, uh, CES is on the right after 8th through the 11th. Yeah, New Media Expo would have been fun, but I'm in the middle of starting a Lynda.com training course, which I'm, which I'm, I'm actually doing the recording for it. So, nice. That's gonna that's gonna take up about a week of time. So that's gonna be fun. Looking forward to it. Actually, I've been, I've, I've loved Lynda.com for years, and I've and yeah. They've been asking me to become a trainer, and I said sure, that'll be fun. Yeah, they're very good. I remember I did an interview with Linda herself a while back, and right. just a wonderful lady, very they're pleasant. They're doing really well, too. She she has really come up. They started out in a little two-room classroom, mm -hmm. and now I think they've got, I don't know, 50,000 square feet of space and lots of studios, and it's just wonderful seeing success. Yes. Yeah. But don't let anybody know. You know, current current government doesn't like success. That's true. You know, we could just take care of everything, go march don't in the garden. Get even if we just don't get me started. Steal from people who are producing, right? That's right. Well, you know so, what? We're leaving California. We're moving out. I've had it. Uh, where are you moving? Uh, probably Utah. Interesting. I love yeah. Utah. I'm reading that more and more. People Actually, are just saying, I would go to Orlando, but my wife doesn't like the heat. 
I like Ooh. Orlando a lot. I don't know why every time I've been there, I just enjoy it. I keep saying, but Disneyland says she likes Disneyland uh, or Disney World. But I can't. <laughs> uh, no, she won't go to Orlando. I, I think she's afraid of big insects and snakes and all the other good stuff. And uh, <laughs> Texas is hot, too. So we decided not Texas. So that was my, our other choice. And uh, and I've always liked Utah. The, the, the mountains are just gorgeous. There. It's kind of like Colorado, but on a smaller scale. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's nice. A lot of people are leaving, though, and that's uh, the concern. I see, uh, well, we, I think you and I would probably, over a few good adult beverages, be able to discuss yeah, a lot of things. 500,000 people have left California. Professionals have left California in the last four years, and wow. about 500 mid to large companies have either completely left or have opened new branches in Utah, in Utah alone. The rest have gone to Florida and Texas, mm -hmm. and, and more are leaving daily, and they don't get it here. They, it's Atlas shrugged all over again. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it's, uh, gentlemen, I'm going to have to leave you. Yeah. Anyway, we can go for hours on this one. Gina, thank you very much for allowing me to do this. A lot of fun. Thank Rick, you. really good to meet you. Same here.